Hi, it's Peter Schiff. It is Monday, October 1st, 2012, and I'm talking to you today on behalf of my company, Euro Pacific Precious Metals. I have been encouraging everybody to buy gold and silver for years. I was particularly vocal about it in late August when the charts broke out on both gold and silver, and it became apparent to more people that QE3 was common. Of course, I knew QE3 was coming the minute they launched QE2 because I knew it wouldn't work. In fact, I knew QE1 was coming before they even coined the term. I just didn't know what they were going to call it, but I knew the Fed was going to print money in a vain attempt to bail out the economy and stimulate growth. I know it's going to fail, but a lot of other people haven't figured that out yet. But what they do know is printing more money destroys its value, and if you want to protect your wealth, you need to buy gold and silver. So when the Fed actually came out with QE3, I dubbed it Operation Screw. Uh, a lot of people are calling it QE Infinity, uh, but I don't think the Fed can do it to infinity because between now and then is going to be a currency crisis. You can't print an infinite number of dollars without completely destroying their value. I don't think it's going to go that far, but believe me, the dollar is likely to lose a lot of value before the Fed gets the message and stops the presses. So in the meantime, you have to protect yourself. Gold and silver prices have been rising uh, recently, but it's not too late to buy. Specifically, I think a lot of investors in precious metals are overlooking silver uh, and focusing mainly on gold. Well, I think precious metals should involve both gold and silver, and don't ignore the opportunities in silver. Don't focus on gold, which typically outshines it from a monetary perspective, but it doesn't always outshine it from an investment perspective. Right now, I think you have an incredible opportunity in silver. In fact, if you've missed out on a lot of the gold rally, one way to catch up is by focusing now on the price of silver. In fact, as good as the gold chart looks, the silver chart looks even better, particularly if you view the market in relationship to its 2011 peak. If you look at gold, for gold to get back to where it was at its high point last year, it needs about a 7% rally. Gold, silver rather, needs almost, I think, a 47% rally to get back to the high from 2011. That's an extra 40% that you could pick up potentially in silver. And I, I would be very hard for me to believe that you can see a new high in gold without a new high in silver. And since I believe gold is going to make a new high, I think silver is going to make a new high too. And therefore, if both metals make a new high, there is much more percentage gain in silver versus gold. Also, historically, you can look at the relationship, the ratio between the price of gold and the price of silver. Over the last 25 years, that ratio has averaged about 45%. Right now, it's 52%. So in order for the gold to silver ratio to get back to its 25-year average, you need a 20% rise in the price of silver without the price of gold going anywhere. Of course, since I think the price of gold is going to rise, the price of silver would have to rise that much faster to get back to its 25-year norm. But even the past 25 years have not been the real norm. Go back to the 19th century, when gold and silver still circulated as money in the United States. The average for that century was a ratio of 16 to 1. Think about where silver would have to be to get back to 16 to 1. In fact, I think at one point in 1980, the ratio got to about 13 to 1. In order to get to that peak, you're looking at silver, I think, at maybe $135 an ounce, assuming the price of gold doesn't go any higher. It stays where it is. Now, I don't know that we're going to get that ratio again. Remember, that was when the Hunt brothers tried to corner the market for silver. So that might be an aberration. Who knows? Maybe that's going to be the high point that silver will ever get relative to gold. But you never know. Maybe it'll retest it. But even if it doesn't retest it, it should approach it. It shouldn't stay down around 52 to 1. You know, in a real bear market, well, maybe you'd see the, the gold to silver ratio move against silver in favor of gold. But if you anticipate a bull market, and of course, we've been in a bull market for 12 years, and I think that bull market 
has a long way to run, especially since Ben Bernanke has promised to print money until it produces a vibrant economy and more jobs. Now, since I know that not only will money printing not grow the economy and create jobs, it will actually inhibit both because the Fed is printing money, we're not going to get real economic growth, and it's going to be harder to create jobs. We're going to print money not until the economy or not until the problems in the economy are solved. We're going to print money until the economy collapses. That's really what he's going to do. He's going to print money until he can't do it anymore because the crisis uh, takes away uh, that potential. That's all that's going to happen. So what you need to know is that this bull market is ongoing. And if it is ongoing, history would say that silver has much further to go than gold. Not that I'm saying only buy silver, but if you've only been buying gold, this is an opportunity to buy silver. And in fact, maybe now you buy a little bit more silver than you otherwise would have bought given the short-term upside in silver and the way it outweighs the short-term upside potential in gold. That is why we're doing actually a promotion at Euro Pacific Metals. We're selling 10 ounce bars of silver as low as 99 cents over the spot price of silver. That's just under a 3% markup. And it's important when you buy precious metals not to pay too high a markup over the spot value. That's one of the biggest mistakes that people are making when they buy gold and silver is that they're paying inflated markups. There are a lot of companies out there that mark their products up 25%, 50%, 70% or more. That means you need an enormous move up in the spot price of the metal just to break even on your purchase. But if you're paying a markup of less than 3%, then just a small move in the value of silver uh, would be enough to break even on the investment. You can get more information on the popular scams that are out there by taking advantage of the free report uh, that I've put together at goldscams.com. Feel free to download that. And of course, gold scams and silver scams. So be forewarned so you're forearmed and you're not an easy target. Of course, if you, if you work with Euro Pacific Capital, you're never going to get victimized by those scams. In fact, I even read recently, there was an article in the New York Times about somebody who bought a gold bar and it ended up being a tungsten bar that was coated with gold. So in other words, it was only worth a fraction of what the investor believed. So you got to make sure that you're not overpaying for your gold and silver, and you got to make sure that the gold and silver you buy is legitimate. So you've got to buy it from a source you can trust. And I think you can trust Euro Pacific Precious Metals, because after all, that's my company. That's it. I hope this announcement is helpful. And remember, of course, you know, there's downside risk as well as upside potential. But I think if you study the facts, given what the Fed is doing now and given what the Fed is likely to do, I think the upside potential far outweighs that downside risk. And I think the real downside risk is in the U.S. dollar. And Ben Bernanke is going to make sure that if you're holding dollars, you're going to lose a lot of wealth and a lot of purchasing power. And if you want to avoid the inflation tax, you avoid U.S. currency and you got to find something else to own, gold and silver, particularly now, given the price and given the charts and what I'm looking at in the market right now, you really want to make sure you have silver. Take care and bye for now.